Welcome to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. The scene today of a big Western Athletic Conference game between the Cougars of Brigham Young University, 8 and 2 on the season and 5 and 1 in the WAC, and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. They are undefeated, one of only four teams in the country, a record of 7 and 0 overall, 5 and 0 in the WAC Conference. This, of course, could go a long way to decide who wins the Western Athletics Conference Championship. This is Steve Zabriskie, along with Hawaiian native son Russ Francis, to bring you the action as the second half of our NCAA doubleheader here on ABC Today. Number 20 is Lee Larson for Hawaii. BYU has won the toss. They have elected to receive. They will be going from south to north. 23, by Sekahima, and 34, Bruce Hansen are back deep to receive for BYU. Sikahima breaking one tackle. Hawaii with excellent coverage as Sikahima gets to the 11 or 12 yard line is all and BYU will have the football but they will be deep in their own territory. First and 10 Andy Page a backup free safety made the tackle. Here's Jim McMahon a 64 percent passer and of course you know what he's done with the records. Scott Pettis at 5'9 and 170 the fullback Wayman Hamilton 220 pound sophomore wide receiver Scott Colley number three is a 6'2 junior and Dan Plater the leading receiver with 750 yards in receptions. First and 10 BYU they've spotted the ball just outside the Cougars 12 yard line. Hamilton going in motion. McMahon to throw on first down. Good protection. Over the middle, complete to Glenn Kozlowski, his fine freshman wide receiver. The ball was fumbled, and Hawaii says they have it, but I don't know what the officials have ruled. Kozlowski is hurt on the play and has gone down trying to get off the field. They've ruled it as BYU's ball, a gain of nine yards on the play. It'll be second down and one yard to go. And now the officials want to confer. Doug Kyle, number 49, made the tackle. Uh, the capacity crowd in excess of 50,000 on hand for this game as we look at the offensive line with tight end Gordon Hudson 6'4", 225. Steve Rogers at right tackle 6'5", and 260. Lloyd Eldridge is the right guard at 6'4", and 250. The center is Bart Oates who's coming back from a broken ankle earlier in the year. The left guard is Calvin Close, number 63, 6'4", and 250. And the left tackle, 58, Bench Stroth, 6'4", and 250, a junior. Those are the guys that give McMahon the great protection that has helped him to set so many great records. As Kozlowski, the freshman wide receiver with apparently an ankle or knee problem, is being assisted from the field by the BYU training staff. You know, Russ, we talked about the significance of the game in the WAC, but you being a native son here are well aware of how big this game is to the community and the islands. Well, yesterday, Dick Tomey, coach of the University Rainbows, Steve, mentioned this may not be only the biggest game in the University of Hawaii sports history, but possibly the biggest sporting event in Hawaii history. Second down, a long one yard to go. Now the officials call time as Bart Oates, the center, wants another football, which is his prerogative. And a new football is brought on. Our referee today is Guy Gibbs. The umpire, John Bradley. The linesman, Tom Robinson. The line judge, Leroy Snow. The field judge, Doug Reeves. And the back judge is George Lloyd. Second down, one and a half yards to go for BYU. The ball at their own 21. Scott Pettis has the first down as he gets across the 25. Tackled by number 10, Andy Page, the free safety out of San Diego, California. It's a first and 10 for BYU. First and 10, BYU at their own 25. Incomplete, intended for Scott Colley, the wide receiver to the right. It'll be second down and 10, BYU still at their own 26. Steve, although that was the quick pass to the outside, uh, follow Nico Noga. Number 54 got in there quick. They are getting in on McMahon quick, and that's what they're going to have to do is get pressure early. But it's interesting to see this early in the game, just a short flat pass, they right in his face. McMahon, of course, the holder of 48 NCAA records, and a 49th record would be the record for holding the most NCAA records. No one else has ever held that many. Second down, 10. May have had preliminary movement. Yes, flags are down. Whistles blow. The play is stopped. It appeared as if Falaniko Nunga, the, the uh, nose guard, who is an outstanding player for Hawaii, and number 85, Itai Satawa, both may have moved preliminarily to the snap. Illegal procedure indicated against Hawaii by referee Guy Gibbs, and it'll be a markoff against the Rainbow Warriors. Well, things get a little tense down in the line, and this is a very emotional game. 
for both teams and very important. And ball foul. As you can see it here. On the defense. Well, can all get just down. getting a head start, and you've got to when you're against a passing offense such as Brigham Young has. You've got to get a jump on the quarterback. That's what they're trying to do. They got caught this time. Second down, about five yards to go. The ball now on the 31 of BYU. We're just underway here in the first quarter with no score. Again, preliminary movement. The handoff to Scott Pettis, and Pettis is stopped right at the line of scrimmage, but it appeared as if it was again Falaniko Noga, the middle guard, who jumped prior to the snap. Again, they're just really fired up. See if they're emotionally up to this game and follow Nico Nonga just getting a head start he's awfully tight to the line you see him in that crouched position there's only one way for him to go and that's straight ahead forward it's another five yard mark off against Hawaii moving the ball out to the 36 it will be very close to the first down yardage it is a first down for BYU their second of the afternoon the second penalty against Hawaii both for five yards Jim McMahon, of course, uh, continued last week to set some tremendous uh, record-breaking breaking statistics. And at halftime today, we're going to have a special report on that for you. First and 10 BYU at their own 36. Flipping it out to Pettis out of the backfield. Excellent defensive coverage. Quickly, number 23, Daryl Williams, a sophomore defensive back from San Francisco, put a big hit on Scott Pettis, who was shaken up. Number 23, Daryl Williams, read that play beautifully all the way down. You see them right on top of the receivers. They were expecting a downfield pass, but Williams reading that screen beautifully out in the fat flat, just tattooed Pettis. You think he uh, was ready for that one? <laughs> I don't think he saw him coming. Great hit by Daryl Williams. By Sikahima, number 23, is into the game, replacing Pettis. That's how they say aloha here at the University of <laughs> That's right, aloha, Mr. Pettis. Second down and 11, a loss of one on the play. Penalty markers are down. McMahon with lots of time, but nobody to throw it to, being chased and runs out of bounds at the 31-yard line for a loss of five on the play. Andy Moody, number 44, a senior linebacker with the pressure on McMahon. But as I mentioned, flags are down. You know, I think I can uh, give a possible explanation of why we're getting so many folks jumping off sides. This is the only the second day game for the University of Hawaii under Coach Tomey. They're used to playing under the lights at nighttime, maybe playing here during the daytime. Steve has them kind of thrown off. It's 82 degrees here in Honolulu at game time. And for those of you in the Rocky Mountain time zone, it's not a bad day there either. We got a report today that it is 80 degrees in Provo, Utah, where BYU is located. So. I don't know uh, if the weather is comparable, but the temperature certainly is. Well, it's interesting. They didn't take any chances. They have a big block of ice down by their bench, Steve, with a fan blowing cool air across the Brigham Young bench, but they're all standing up right now. It is second down, seven yards to go, following the penalty. McMahon calling signals, changing the play at the line of scrimmage, the crowd making noise to hamper him. Fires a look-in pattern. It's complete to Neil Ballholm, number 89. Tackled immediately by Dana McLemore, number 15 in the secondary, but a penalty marker is down. And it appears to be against BYU. We have a report that uh, Glenn Kozlowski, the freshman wide receiver, as you look at one of the fans on the BYU bench, blowing uh, some cool air, hopefully, for them. Uh, injured his right ankle. It was an old ankle sprain that he re-injured and his status for the rest of the game still in question. This is something that's important at this point in time for the University of Hawaii. They have been hurt by injuries as we look at Brigham Young. They've been hurt by injuries and they're offsides, but uh, this is giving them a chance to sort of push Brigham Young back into a 2-11 situation. Second down, 11 yards to go. The ball just inside the BYU 35. McMahon firing it to Scott Colley, tackled immediately by Dana McLemore. Again, with a fine defensive play, the senior defensive back from Venice, California, was right on Scott Colley. The gain is only two yards. As they move it out to the 37, it'll be third down and nine. And if this is kind of pressure, Steve, they're really going to have to, uh, Brigham Young is, they're throwing the short passes at number 15, Dana. 
Lamora was just ready for this. And this is the about the only pass you can really. This is a read between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Full on blitz. Let's get that quick pass away, and they're in the shotgun. Biggest play of the game so far as McMahon stands about six yards deep. Third down, nine. Being chased out of the pocket, firing it long downfield. Gordon Hudson, the tight end, has it, and he's out of bounds near the Hawaii 40-yard line. Mark Kafensis, the senior strong safety, bumped him out of bounds, but a big third down play by BYU and a first down at the Hawaii 41. McMahon uh, really showing a lot of courage standing back here. He's looking downfield. Doesn't see anything open. Hawaii playing the zone. Finds Hudson, number 95, coming across the middle into that vacant part of the zone. And he had all day to get there. It's a gain of 22 yards. BYU in Hawaii territory for the first time. Hawaii has yet to possess the football. We're in the first quarter with no score. The draw to Wayman Hamilton, the fullback. Trying to get outside, he cannot, but does gain three or four yards before he's tackled by number 49, Doug Kyle, the fine senior inside linebacker for the Rainbows. It'll be a gain of three. It'll be second down and about seven yards to go. This is a real complex puzzle to figure out in that McMahon throwing the ball so much, they're going to give up some of these short running plays. It's tough to really drop back and cover the pass and really play tight across the line against the run. Second down, seven, just outside the Hawaii 37. The blitz is on. McMahon dumps it off incomplete over the middle intended for Gordon Hudson, the tight end. Andy Page, the free safety, was coming all the way, and McMahon had to unload it well before he wanted to. It appeared rest that time like Hawaii did a good job of disguising the blitz. Well, you can see those linebackers in the middle there. Uh... You'll, I think you'll see them through the course of the game. McMahon here trying to figure it out. Jumping back and forth into the line, then backing up, trying to keep McMahon off balance. And again, when McMahon reads that blitz, about the only pass he can get off with a one second he has to get the ball is that short pass. Hawaii doing a good job of covering underneath. You see, we have no score here in the first quarter. Hawaii ranked 16th in the UPI this week. BYU ranked 17th, both going after the WAC championship. From the shotgun. Long and over the middle, incomplete, intended for Gordon Hudson, number 95, the tight end. The, the ball was a bit overthrown, but good coverage by Hawaii. Kent Kafensis, the freshman strong safety, who backs up Brother Mark, was back there defending. It's fourth down, and BYU will have to give up the football. Welcome back to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. Steve Zabriskie along with Russ Francis, Hawaii. After that 26 yard punt by Mike Mees had a first and 10 just outside their own 11 yard line in two plays. They have moved the ball to the 16 where it is now third down and six yards to go. Number 16 Tim Lyons giving to Tola Umu the fullback and David Tola Umu is close to a first down as he's near the 22 before 93 Brad Anai and number 44 David Apu the fine linebacker for the Cougars makes the tackle it is a first down for Hawaii their first of the day here's the offensive unit Gary Allen their fine tailback David Tola Umu who carried on that play at fullback He's 195 pounder. The wide receivers Ron Pennick at 5'9 and 175 and number 81 Merv Lopes at six feet and 175 on first and 10 the option Gary Allen with the football and Allen gets about three yards out to the 30 or rather the 27 before number 13 Steve Brady and 35 Mike O'Neill make the tackle a penalty marker is down as we look at the big guys up front. Kani Kawaii at 250 pounds, Jesse Sapolu at 250 pounds, Nolan Baker at 6'1 and 225 pounds is the center, Jim Donovan at 245 pounds, number 63 the right guard, and 78 Jim Mills, 6'8 and 260. That's a uh, big guy there in the line. Healthy. And yeah. one of them just caught for holding, it looks like. The penalty is against Hawaii. That will nullify the gain and move the football back inside the 15 of the Rainbow Warriors on the offense still first down the call from Guy Gibbs the referee it is still first down but it is now first and 20 the major holding penalty of 10 yards there are two remember one is illegal use of hands holding it for five yards this one the 10 yard penalty makes it first and 20 on the sprint draw it is Gary Allen and Allen will go virtually nowhere good defensive penetration number 77 Mike Morgan the junior defensive tackle out of Salt Lake City with the play for BYU. 
It'll be second down and still about 10 yards or rather 20 yards to go. And that really hurts. They had a first down, the University of Hawaii, running the ball, then making good progress. Get that penalty, pulls you right back, second and 20. And uh, you can bet that Brigham Young will be dropping back on the pass, rushing an extra man. Tim Lyons, the 6 2 junior, firing it to Toto Umu out of the backfield. It is incomplete. It will now be third down and 20 yards to go for the Rainbows. It'll be interesting to see what the university, they're in a deep, deep hole here, Steve, but both teams started. As you remember, Brigham Young started back in their own 10, 13 yard line and uh, got it out to midfield. Hawaii is having some trouble here, and the main reason for that is the penalties. And we welcome you back to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii, and the report on the space shuttle, of course. Happily, it is down safely, and we will we'll await further reports on the emergence of the astronauts from the shuttle itself. Here we are in the early stages of the second quarter with still no score. BYU handing the football off to Scott Pettis, number 29, on second down and 10 from their own 30-yard line. Dana McLemore, number 15, made the tackle. Both teams have had a bit of trouble moving the football. Hawaii has yet to penetrate BYU territory. The Cougars have penetrated Hawaii territory, but were unable to score or even get to within field goal range. They've exchanged punts a couple of times. And with no score and 14 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the second quarter, BYU has a third down and four at their own 37. Steve Zabriskie along with Russ Francis from Honolulu, Hawaii. McMahon, good protection, looking for someone to be open. Finally finds Plater over the middle, and Dan Plater fumbles the football. BYU fumbles it, and Hawaii has recovered. Number nine, Kent Kafensis, the strong safety, recovered the fumble. It appeared as if Verlon Red and Andy Page made the hit on Plater that caused it at the Hawaii 47. Let me tell you something as we look at McMahon drop back here to pass. He gets the ball to Plater, but you see this hit here in just a second. Two or three rainbows jump on it. And number nine, Kent Kafensis getting back for that drop uh, pass earlier. And we saw the tea leaves being waved. 13.57 remaining in the second quarter and still no score following the turnover. The fumble by Dan Plater. Kent Defensis with the recovery. It is first and 10 Hawaii at their own 47. Now Bernard Quarles is in at quarterback and he gives to David Tolaumu the fullback. And Tolaumu gets a yard or two is all. David Apu, number 44, making the tackle on Hawaii's fine fullback. The gain is out to the 49. It'll be second down and eight. As I mentioned earlier, I kind of got rushed there, but the tea leaves that we saw being waved by the Hawaii fans is for good luck for their rainbow team. As you see, the cheerleaders, the crowd is waving thousands of tea leaves in the stadium for good luck. Tolomo, the ball carrier again, still fighting for yardage as he gets it into BYU territory. The first time Hawaii has penetrated the Cougars' side of the field, and they will mark it near the 46. Pulisila Filianga, number 73 on the tackle. Down. Gary Allen fighting, struggling near the first down marker. It will depend on where they mark it, and it does appear to be enough for a first down from where they put the football down. Referee Guy Gibbs has asked for a timeout, and they're going to look at it very closely. Brad and I, number 93, one of the defenders there making the hit on Allen. And Gary Allen really not getting a chance as we look at the signal here referee calling timeout Gary Allen really hasn't run the ball and at 5'10 175 as you can see him that last play fighting for the first down as they come in for the measurement he packs a wall up for uh, just weighing 175 pounds and it is enough for the first down as you see Allen now has carried three times and picked up only six yards that obviously the biggest carry of the day for him so far as Hawaii has picked up a key first down and moved the ball into BY territory for the first time. Twelve and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. No score. Bernard Quarles now in a quarterback in place of Tim Lyons. Quarles rolling and shooting it out to Tola Umo and Tola Umo's down the sideline. Breaking one tackle inside the 10 and hold down near the five-yard line. Number 35, Mike O'Neill and number 13, Steve Brady had to get together to bring him down. Brady finally making the tackle inside the 10, but they may be bringing it back and say that Tola Umu stepped out of bounds 
at about the 28-yard line. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Tolo Umu, not only a fine runner, but a great, uh, a very adequate receiver. Tiptoeing the sidelines, we'll watch his feet here. The referee watching him very closely. He makes the cut here, and his foot goes on the line. And as you can see, the official was right on the play. But you can see the threat that this Tolo Umu presents for the Brigham Young defense. Once he got started, Steve, he was just motoring down that field. He's got good outside speed. Bernard Quarles, number four, 205-pound junior and a quarterback. Gary Allen hit immediately as he crosses the line of scrimmage. 59, Kyle Whittingham, the fine senior linebacker for the Cougars, made the hit. They'll mark it at about the 22 for a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. And University of Hawaii coach Dick Tomey likes to trade the quarterbacks off as we see obviously Brigham Young coming in we expected this throwing the ball more but Hawaii really having a tough time going 19 yards but he switches his quarterbacks around Tim Lyons number 16 and number four Bernard Quarles as we're getting a timeout call as we look at uh, coach Tommy here he uh, takes care of everything around here not just the offense the defense but also the astroturf he likes to make sure that everything's in order <laughs> Dick Tomey, of course, in his fifth year, a record of 32 and 19 here at Hawaii. And BYU coach Lavelle Edwards, of course, in his 10th year, the dean of WAC coaches. We'll return in just a minute. This may look like a little touch of Polynesia, but what it is actually on both goalposts are tea leaves tucked inside the padding there by the goalpost to ensure good luck for this Hawaiian team. The students of the University of Hawaii came before the game and tucked the goalpost full of he leaves and we'll see whether it works or not. Always has been passed. Second down and nine. Quarles running the option. Hit as he crosses the line of scrimmage. May have picked up a couple of yards to the 20-yard line. Number 59, Kyle Whittingham, again making the hit. Whittingham, whose younger brother backs him up, the leading tackler for BYU. He's also one of uh, BYU's captains and moves very fast at six feet and 224 pounds. But also Quarles really not getting that ball out. Number three, Anthony Egger was going outside. He was the ball carrier that Quarles wanted to get it to, and had to take it himself. It is third down. The ball just at the 20-yard line of BYU. Quarles looking for an opening. In trouble. He's going to be sacked behind the line of scrimmage. Brad and I, Chuck Ian along with number 77 Mike Morgan all there having a little discussion here on the field exactly what they might do on fourth down it looks like it's going to be a kick they are close to field goal range and coming into the game is Lee Larson number 20 a senior from Aba Beach here in Oahu. He's made seven of 13. This will be spotted at the 32. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. And it is no good. It is wide to the right. A 42-yard attempt by Lee Larson is wide to the right. 10 minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the second quarter. We still have no score. As we look at the Western Athletic Conference standings, the leaders, at least, in the WAC Conference, Hawaii, Utah, Brigham Young, Wyoming, all with a shot at the conference championship. Of course, Hawaii, unbeaten on the season and in the conference, needs to win here. So does Brigham Young, of course. And uh, Brigham Young has yet to play Utah. They will do that next week in Provo. McMahon on first and ten. Back to pass. Time incomplete. Penalty marker is down. We'll have an interference call against Hawaii as Berlon Red, the free safety number 12, hit the intended receiver Dan Plater a bit too early. Well, it's again, it, penalties have really hurt this rainbow team up to this point. As you can hear, the crowd obviously displeased. We're about to get the call. pass interference against the defense. We have a first down. Referee Guy Gibbs, here as we look at the play once again. Well, we really can't see whether or not uh, where the interference comes into play. But I think that uh, Hawaii knew, we saw a couple of players sort of shaking their heads. They thought there might be interference, and it was called. First and 10 Cougars now at their own 41. 
Wayman Hamilton. Hamilton fighting for yardage at the 45 of BYU. Number 13, Alva Satelli, the outside linebacker and a freshman, making the tackle. Hamilton gains four. It'll be second down and six. BYU just outside their own 45. Well, B BYU is having success on the ground. I think they've done a fine job of back and forth their passing and running game. It's giving Hawaii a tough time up to this point in the game. On second down and six. Just a three man rush. McMahon can't find anybody open. He runs and slides down at the 36. A penalty marker goes down. And we may have a call on number 62, Larry Goaz, the nose guard who went flying over the top of McMahon when McMahon went down and the flag was thrown there. I can't imagine what it would be because no contact was made. We'll get the call here from Guy Gibbs. Nobody touched McMahon. I'd like to. See I can't it's, quite understand exactly why that call was made. Well, apparently the indication is clipping against BYU. Apparently there was someone in front of McMahon blocking for him who clipped a Hawaii player. Well, that explains why I don't understand what happened. I didn't see it. <laughs> that will move BYU back. It will be from the spot of the infraction, which was the 47-yard line. The option resting, of course, with Hawaii and the discussion going on now nine minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the second quarter we still have no score as we look at the Hawaii team on the field it's they have about 50 percent of their players on the UH roster are homegrown here in Hawaii and that's the highest percentage since Hawaii joined the division one in 76 they've really recruited on the mainland very strongly but they're getting back to getting more of their players and they've got some great ones. Let's get the call here from referee Guy Gibbs as they've moved it back to the 32. We have clipping on the offensive team. Second down. It'll be second down and now 19 yards to go. BYU at their own 32. The pitch back to Scott Pettis. Pettis running down the sideline, picks up nine or ten yards before he's bumped out of bounds, and a little scuffle going on between a couple of players on the sideline as Pettis is run out of bounds in front of the bench. Andy Page, number 10, the free safety. Third down, nine yards to go from the 42-yard line of BYU. The blitz is on, picked up. McMahon can't find an open receiver. He's hauled down at the line of scrimmage. No, a loss five yards on the play back at the 37 yard line Palanico Noga the nose guard the sophomore out of Honolulu tackles McMahon for a five yard loss it'll be fourth down and BYU will give up the football and McMahon of course coming off that hyper extended knee Russ not with the mobility that he had earlier in the season well he had plenty of time back there actually but Hawaii coming up with a great rush and Palanico Noga was the last freshman selected to the all whack team last year as a freshman since Preston Denard in New Mexico. Mike Meese is on to punt for BYU. Dana McLemore, number 15, back deep to receive a high hanging punt. McLemore takes the fair catch at the 17 yard line of the Rainbow Warriors. And with eight minutes and four seconds left in the second quarter, Hawaii will go on offense first and 10 from that point. As you look at that brace on the left knee, of Jim McMahon. Here's a final. Clemson has defeated Maryland 21 to 7. In the second quarter, Washington State leading Cal 6 to nothing. A punt of 45 yards by Mees, and it is first and 10 Hawaii at their own 17. Quarles handing off to Allen. Allen trying to get outside. A penalty marker is down as Allen gets out to the 20. It is hauled out of bounds at the 22. David Apu 44. Brady 13. And McKee 15 were all over there chasing the very fleet Gary Allen. But a penalty marker again is down. Both teams really having trouble getting on track here into the second quarter. University of Hawaii, they really have been ineffective in the passing game as we're about to get the call from Guy Gibbs. 
And it's against the University of Hawaii once again, dropping them back deeper into their own territory. But neither team really has had an opportunity to really get anything going. Brigham Young is really closest. Uh, they've moved the ball very well, but unable to take advantage of it. I think it's a little bit different game than most people had anticipated, Russ. They're talking, I was speaking to play, uh, people yesterday and early today in the in the parking lot as people prepare for this game as we watch the penalty being marked off. They were really expecting a high-scoring game, and I don't think that's what we're going to see. Here's the call from Guy Gibbs. We have an illegal block below the waist on the offensive team, a crackback. Crackback or chop block against the uh, offensive unit, Hawaii. That's their sixth penalty for a total of 50 yards. It is first down, but now first and 19 as it was marked off from the spot of the infraction. Tola Umu, the ball carrier, looking for a hole and punching it out to about the 12 yard line is all. Pulisila Filianga, or Junior as he's known, number 73, makes the tackle. Gain of about three or four. It'll be second down now and about 16 yards to go. This is a heck of a place to get going on offense. I'll tell you, as an offensive player, and the crowd is kind of quiet here, perplexed, I'm sure, as well as the players are, how the heck are we going to get out of here? Bernard Quarles in at quarterback still for Hawaii. Gary Allen tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Number 77, Mike Morgan, 260-pound junior, with a fine effort to haul down Allen before he could really get going. But Gary gets it out to the 15-yard line for a gain of three. It'll be third down and 13 now. Hawaii at their own 13. Seven minutes remaining in the first half and still no score. Well, Coach Dick Tomey of the university team has in the past shown some interesting surprises down here in his own territory. Muddle huddle, flea flickers, reverse pass options. It'll be interesting to see if he takes that kind of a risk down here in his own territory. Third and 13, Quarles running the option. Going to keep it. Gets a block. Out to the 29, to the 30-yard line before he's knocked down. Kyle Whittingham, number 59, along with O'Neill and Brady, all helping out to make the stop. And he was going to take that ball to run it all the way from snap. As we see the tea leaves again being waved and the green banners here in Aloha Stadium in beautiful Halava, Hawaii, right down by Honolulu. But he took it all by himself, got some good blocking, got the first down. Gain of 15 yards out to the 30, first and 10, Hawaii, a big play for the Rainbows. Quarles, faking, throwing, incomplete, intended for Reggie Young coming out of the backfield. Reggie could not hang on. 99, Brandon Flint putting the pressure on Quarles in the backfield. And in defense of 34, Reggie Young, that is a very tough pass to catch. He's running to his right, the ball thrown just a little bit behind him. It's really tough to, to get yourself turned around and got an interesting score, just came in. Ohio State 7-0, Northwestern 6, if you can believe that. And we'll have some other key scores after the kick. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball still at Hawaii's 30-yard line. The Rainbow's multiple offense now. Out of the eye formation, they switch, and wide receiver Ron Pinnock goes set to the right. Quarles firing it for Pinnock and completing it for a first down outside the 40. Knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line. 47, Todd Shell and 15, Dave McKee were covering, but Ron Pinnock gets the first down. And Pinnock makes the, that tough catch. He's running again to his right as we see Quarles sprinting out to his right. Look at him turn all the way around here. Keep his balance. That's from uh, one of the programs that Coach Dick Tomey has, has got started here at the University of uh, Hawaii for good balance for the receivers is surfing. Puts them out on the beach a few hours a day on a surfboard. You know, gets some really good balance techniques that way, spinning around. That would. You'd know something about that, wouldn't you? Get wet, too. <laughs> First and 10 away from their own 43. Allen fumbles the pitch. It goes out of bounds inside the 40 near the 37. It will be a loss of six yards on the play as the ball was fumbled out of bounds. Hawaii retaining possession, but now it'll be second down and 16. Well, just when Hawaii gets started, gets on track, something goes wrong, and Gary Allen just could not get the handle on this. That's a tough play between quarterback and, and whether it's a receiver coming in a reverse, a pitch out, any kind of a pitch out, 
especially when you're trading quarterbacks like Coach Tomey does. Each one has his own way of getting the ball out there, and it not only is tough to really judge, but then it's tough to really get on track and get pick up your speed. Second down, 16. The Rainbows from their own 37. Quarles, under pressure, tries to cut back. Hit by Whittingham as he gets near the 40-yard line. Dropped about the 39. He gets back about three yards of the six they lost on the fumble. It'll be third down and about 13 or 14 yards to go. Five well, minutes, 34 seconds as we look at it once again, remaining in the second quarter. I was going to say we're looking at number 93, Brad and I. His job is to keep that containment inside. As you see a little face mask here, I'm sure Brad didn't mean that. But his job is to keep Quarles to turn him in side and the 6'4", 252 pounds. Do you think you would run out in his direction? Uh, probably not. He's from Laia, Hawaii. Quarles trying to run it back up the middle. Gets hauled down by Pulisila Filiunga as he gets near the 40-yard line. Again, if perhaps a half a yard is all, but it's academic because it's fourth down now and 13 yards to go. Hawaii will once again have to punt the football away and into the game. Number 11, Frank Natividad, a junior from Hacienda Heights, California. By Sikahima, number 23, drops back as usual for the Cougars of BYU. Natividad with a low kick, landing at the 35, takes a Hawaii bounce, and Sikahima picks it up at the 22 and returns it to the 24-yard line before Andy Moody, number 44, knocks him out of bounds. A punt of 38 yards. We'll return to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii in just a minute. Back at Aloha Stadium with 435 remaining in the first half of play and surprisingly by most people's reckoning anyway prior to the game we have yet to see one point put up on the scoreboard by either team. BYU has a first and ten at their own 24. McMahon going to the shotgun once again. And it's complete to Dan Plater at the 40 yard line and Plater will have enough for a first down as he gains about 16 yards. Number 53 Anthony Woodson sophomore outside linebacker was covering on the play but the Cougars leading receiver picks up a big first down play first and 10 BYU at their own 40. The Cougars having success throwing the ball outside of the numbers. It looks like the University of Hawaii defensive backs are having trouble. Their coverage is right around the numbers, and they're not really getting out to the sideline. You see McMahon getting the short passes, and that time to Plater right along the sideline outside of the numbers. That's the ninth first down of the day for BYU. Faking to Hamilton. McMahon firing it and complete to Sikahima, who takes a shot. At the 47 or 8 yard line again it was Dana McLemore Hawaii's fine defensive back and Sikahima is not getting up very quickly. Well you really hate to see anybody get hit like this. But when you're coming across into that territory Kurt Gunther just taking a shot. Sikahima by Sikahima I number apologize. 23 is the player down. By a sophomore from Mesa, Arizona. Kind of a do-everything guy for the Cougars. He returns kickoffs and punts. We've seen him returning punts this afternoon and is the backup running back to Scott Pettis, number 29, who himself took a shot earlier in the ball game. Well, we have some final scores here. Maryland and Clemson. Clemson winning 21 to 7. Alabama, Penn State. Alabama 31 and Penn State 16. Michigan over Purdue, 28 to 10. Iowa over Wisconsin. 17 to 7. There's Vi coming off under his own power and uh, probably just got his bell rung a bit. Some more final scores here. We have Michigan State. Wow, 43 over Minnesota, 43 to 36. Dartmouth over Brown, 38 13. Cornell handing, handling Columbia, 15 to 9. And Syracuse over Boston College, 27 17. Second down, one yard to go. The gain was nine. The ball at the 49 of BYU. Wayman Hamilton stopped at the line of scrimmage. Super defensive effort by Reggie Robinson. The senior from Iva Beach. Have you been to Iva Beach? Many times. 
And as we spoke earlier about looking across the field from the press box, looking Maku to the mountains, Makai behind us, which is mountains, west in Hawaii is Eva heading towards Eva Beach, and that's where the surf is. A gain of a half a yard. It is third down and a little less than a foot or so to go for first down near midfield. Scott Pettis has the first down, breaks the tackle, crosses the 45 of Hawaii, and is into rainbow territory at the 42. Number 10, Andy Page, the free safety, and number 85, Itai Satawa, make the tackle. Brigham Young again having success on the ground. They, uh, the University of Hawaii, that is, has been really dropping back more people than you can count to cover the pass. So Brigham Young doing the thing that's smart. Come up with a running game. Make him tighten up across the line and bring more people out of that passing secondary. Pettis has carried four times now for 31 yards. First and 10 Cougars from the 42 of Hawaii. Long down the far sideline. Incomplete. Penalty marker is down. Dan Plater was the intended receiver. And number eight, Mark Kofensis, the senior strong safety. The oldest of the Kofensis brothers is livid because interference has been called against Mark Kofensis as the officials rule that he was impeding Plater's ability to catch the football. That's exactly right. He had to have. It didn't look like he really made contact before the play, but he might have had his hand in the face of the receiver. Interference. And that is the call as the ball will be marked just outside the five yard line of Hawaii. Here it is again. I really can't see anything there, Steve. I'll tell you the truth. I don't like to make any calls from this far away, and the referee does have the field position, but I want to tell you from what I just saw, I didn't see any contact, I didn't see any shielding, I didn't see any hands up in the face. I'm sure there's going to be quite a bit of discussion if Brigham Young comes in to score us on this play. Well, more, most of more than the 50,000 here in Aloha Stadium also disagree, yeah. and consequently, McMahon says that he cannot be heard, and so he asks for time, and the referee grants it. Dick Tomey is just about everywhere but down there by the line of scrimmage. He is not happy with this call, and I would have to agree with him. It's a, it's a big break. You can see him wiping his forehead and saying, my God, I was on the same side where the play happened. I didn't see anything. Of course, he wouldn't. A big break for Brigham Young, but boy, those are really tough. Those are really tough to, to call. See? First and goal, BYU outside the five. Wayman Hamilton breaking a tackle and getting to perhaps the three-yard line. Hawaii with excellent pursuit. McLemore, number 15 and 53. Anthony Woodson coming up very quickly as it looked as if Hamilton might be breaking free. He gains two. It'll be second and goal from the three. And again, another man coming over to help on that play was number 23, Daryl Williams, as the defensive secondary coming up with some big plays. Williams just almost breaks that, but number 23 and number 53, Anthony Woodson, coming in. That was a big play. Again, the crowd makes noise. Second and goal from the three. The first real scoring threat we've had today. Darrell Wilson that whole play and he played that beautifully he had that short pass across the middle it really affects BYU's passing game they really can't get anything and spread things out but man picks a man out but he's looking to his right looks to his left and you would have thought that that ball would have been caught by number three Scott Colley but again Darrell Williams all over him. That's right. Darrell Williams, number 23, with the defensive play. It is third and goal from the three-yard line. This man trying to flood his own. Now he's going to run it. Down to the two is all. Andy Page, number 10, and number 54, Falaniko Noga, combined to make the tackle. And it is fourth and goal from the two. BYU now will decide whether or not they want to go for it or kick the field goal. They have asked for a timeout. And as we looked at that play, McMahon 
trying to get the ball to number 29, Scott Pettis. Well, number nine, Kent Kofensis, was all over him again. Again, couldn't get the ball off. Great defense. Welcome you back to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii, after the report on the space shuttle. Steve Zabriskie along with Russ Francis, BYU on a 19-yard field goal by Kurt Gunther with about a minute and a half remaining in the first half here has taken a three to nothing lead over Hawaii. We have 40 seconds remaining in the half as in to punt is number 11 Frank Natividad of Hawaii on fourth down and nine by Sikahima back to receive for BYU takes it at the 22 yard line and gets it out to the 26 fumbles. We'll wait for the referee he says that Sikahima was down and BYU will retain possession the capacity house here in a Aloha Stadium the majority of whom are rooting for the rainbows of Hawaii are not happy with the call it was a pass interference call against Hawaii that gave BYU field position to allow Gunther to kick the field goal as Hawaii held them three times inside the five yard line and they had to settle for a 19 yard field goal and that pass inter interference was sort of questionable at least at least from what we saw as we see Sikahima here really getting hammered again by four or five guys. First and 10 BYU, the shotgun again from their own 25. Plenty of time for McMahon as Hawaii has dropped nine back to cover. Now it's complete to Gordon Hudson, who gets open, runs over a couple of Hawaii defenders, and gets into rainbow territory at the 46 before he's finally hauled down. And there were some Hawaii defenders who paid the price on that one. Kent Kofensis, number nine, and Verlon Red made the tackle, but Andy Page got blasted as BYU calls timeout. And McMahon had all day again here. Hawaii only rushing two guys. Number 74, as we look to your right of the screen, Reggie Robinson just can't get in. Brigham Young very smartly double teaming him. Nine guys dropping back to cover the pass. But again, when you give a quarterback all day, and Hudson breaking across the middle here, all the field to work with and all day to work with it. It really puts the defense at a disadvantage and I'm surprised that uh, they would give McMahon that much time in this type of a situation. You see it is first and 10 with 11 seconds remaining in the first half as Jim McMahon talks to his offensive coach Ted Toller on the sideline and they discuss what they might do for the final 11 seconds. You know, BYU with one timeout remaining. Excuse only me. Only one Russ. left. We looked at that as we look at McMahon here on the sideline. The receiver coach is Norm Chow. He was named Athlete of the Year here at Punahou High School in Hawaii. He played at Utah, was an all whack guard, a head coach at Wailua High School here. He has done a very fine job working with Lavelle Edwards and Jim McMahon in the passing game. And this is the type of team that can strike quick. They certainly are within range. They've got 11 seconds. You can bet they're going to put it down or put it up for the score. That's right. You can see there momentarily what McMahon has done this afternoon here in the first half. First and 10 Cougars just outside the 45 of Hawaii again going from the shotgun. McMahon eluding the rush will have to run it gets what he can and gets out of bounds near the 30. They'll mark it at the 28 yard line of Hawaii run out of bounds by Itai Satawa. The junior defensive tackle from San Diego. Three seconds, as you see, remaining on the clock here in the first half. BYU leading three to nothing. And it looks like Kurt Gunther might have another chance to score as they line up for the kick. They'll mark it just outside the 45, a 35, rather. It will be a 45 yard field goal attempt by Gunther, who hit a line drive shot from 19 just moments ago. Yes, Kurt Gunther, a 45-yard field goal as time runs out here in the first half. And in what was expected to be somewhat of an offensive show, BYU leads 6 to nothing over the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii in a game that could very well decide the WAC championship here in 1981. Really hurting the Hawaii team, not getting on the board during the first half. Brigham Young taking advantage of some penalties and some mistakes. Scoring twice in field goals, 6-0. We'll be back with halftime in a minute. 
Steve Zabriskie along with Russ Francis welcoming you back to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. Six to nothing, Brigham Young, as we are getting set to start the second half of play. And we'll take a look, Russ, at the first half stats. Well, the first thing that jumps right out at me, Steve, is the penalties for Hawaii. Eight for 92 yards. They've killed every drive. Gave Brigham Young the opportunity to score that first field goal with that interference call against the University of Hawaii. Every time they get the ball moving, get in a good field position, they get a penalty. That's really hurt them. And conversely, that's um, one thing that Brigham Young really hasn't had many of, just two for 20 yards. Rushing yardage, passing yardage, I mean, pretty much what we expected, but the penalties have really hurt the Rainbows. BYU had the option at the start of the ball game. Hawaii with the option now, and they have elected to receive. David Tolumu is back deep to receive as Kurt Gunther kicks off for the Cougars. High and deep, Tolumu, five yards deep, is going to bring it out. And just a super defensive effort by 49, John Ramage, a junior from Orem, Utah, to break through a blocker and drop Tolaumu at the 14-yard line, where Hawaii will go on offense first and 10. Ramage being congratulated by his teammates as he comes off. Six to nothing, BYU on two Kurt Gunther field goals in the waning moments of the first half. And that really sets the tempo psychologically, Steve. You get back inside your own 20 and here on side your own 15 it's really tough to get yourself motivated something Hawaii has to do at this time Bernard Quarles pitching back to Gary Allen and Allen gains perhaps five as he gets near the 19 yard line before he's knocked down by 59 Kyle Whittingham it'll be a gain of four as we look at Mike Morgan the left tackle 260 pounder Pulisila Filiunga 255 and a senior Brad and I at 6'4 and 250. David Apu at 225, one linebacker. Kyle Whittingham, who made the hit, also 225. And Mike O'Neill, number 35, a 220 pounder at the other weak side linebacker. That's the BYU defensive front. Second down, six yards to go. The pitch back to number three, Anthony Edgar. And Edgar is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. Kevin Walker, number 14, with excellent penetration to get in there, fighting his way through a block, and Pulisita Filiunga and John Ramage were also in on the play. Here is Dave McKee at the left corner. The right corner is Tom Holmo. The strong safety is Kevin Walker, who made that play, and the weak safety is number 13, Steve Brady. There's a loss on the play of perhaps a yard or two. A yard is all as they'll mark it at the 18 yard line where it is now third down and six yards to go. Quarles rolling away from the pressure and throwing back to Anthony Edgar. Edgar has a convoy with two blockers in front. McKee can't get him and Kevin Walker number 14 finally knocks him out of bounds at the BYU 40 yard line. And I can bet you can all the players on the Hawaii bench are saying it's about time. They've really got had some offensive uh, progress early in the game, but penalties have killed them here. They hit it back to Anthony Ager, number three, and he just takes it down the sideline with a whole group of people out in front of him. Number 76, Jesse Sopolu, out providing the blocking and a big guy. This is also surprising to see the quarterback, number four, Quarles, playing this much of the game. That's true. He's and in. we have 78 switching over to the tight end spot. The pitch back to Gary Allen. And Allen trying to get outside. Cannot. He's knocked out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Pulisita Filiunga, 73. And 35, Mike O'Neill making the play. Interesting formation change there. Number 78, Jim Mills, the right tackle, shifting back into the left tight end spot, becoming a tackle eligible. Brigham Young didn't seem to be too terribly confused, and it was a running play at that as we look at Dick Tomey. He's got to be thinking it's so important in this drive to come out with some points early in the third quarter we're just underway here in the third quarter 13 minutes and 20 seconds remaining it is second down about nine yards to go for Hawaii they are in BYU territory just inside the 40 Corals with good protection and he completes it to number seven Kurt Profensis Number 15, Dave McKee making the tackle. Defense is just taking that short pass out towards the sideline. Hawaii, you would think, is going to have to open their passing game up. They really haven't had much success on the ground. They were highly touted as a rushing team coming in here, only getting 77 yards in the first half. 
I mean, that's quite a few, but then again, penalties killing them. They're going to have to sort of get the passing game, mix it up with the running game a little bit if they're going to move Brigham Young, sort of spread them out a little bit. It's a gain of seven on the play. The ball is at the 33-yard line of BYU. Hawaii moving the football into Brigham Young territory for really the first time. Anthony Edgar diving over the pile and getting it down to the 30. A gain of three. He'll be very close to the first down yardage. And referee Guy Gibbs has asked for a timeout to inspect the situation and see if it is, in fact, a first down. It is, as the ball is well across the 30. First and 10, Hawaii, as they are now inside the 30 of BYU. And that's exactly what they needed, Steve. They've got it, had to get the first down. They've been having trouble making that first down conversion, and part of the problem is because they really haven't had much success on first down. They've been put in the hole many times, not only by penalties, but not being able to get any ground gaining first and second downs. And it looks like somebody's calling a timeout someplace. It is Hawaii that has asked for a timeout. 12 minutes, three seconds remaining in the third quarter. Six to nothing. BYU still in the lead. Hawaii will have the football in BYU territory when we return to Aloha Stadium. A capacity house. This game was a sellout, but there are some no-shows today because it's being televised, of course, here locally in Hawaii. And we will track those people down. <laughs> Anthony Edgar sweeping to the left with a blocker in front of Tolo Umu. Convoyed him around the left side. It'll be a gain of eight as they get to the 22-yard line of BYU. Kevin Walker, number 14, over there to run him out of bounds. Tolo Umo really with a great block. One thing Brigham Young mentioned uh, to us yesterday, Coach Edwards saying they were concerned about Hawaii's wide running game. We really haven't seen much of it because Hawaii's been running from a disadvantage most of the time with second and long or third and long. I'm going to give you some scores here really quickly. Princeton over Yale, 35-31 is the final. And North Carolina, Virginia. North Carolina had 17-14. We'll be back to some more after this. Second down, two yards to go. Allen stopped at the 21-yard line and thrown back short of the first down. Really closer to three yards to go. Kyle Whittingham, BYU's excellent middle linebacker with the hit. And as we look also, Georgia Tech is behind. Uh, well, that's the final now. Lost to Navy, 20-14. to Rutgers over losing to West Virginia, 20-3. And Wake Forest beating Richmond 34-22. You know, one other thing as I look here, Steve Yale losing the first game of the year to Princeton 35-31. I just about missed it. That leaves only three. Hawaii is one of them, unbeaten and untied. Anthony Edgar slips down. Brandon Flint was there defensively to turn him up and then made the tackle. Brandon Flint, number 99, with a big defensive play for BYU. It'll be fourth down and three and a half yards to go for Hawaii at their BYU 23. They really have to take, they really have not had the opportunity to take advantage of these field position situations. They've really had trouble making that third down conversion. I'm not sure how many they've made, but they've really uh, been put behind, and this is, they've got to get on the scoreboard somehow, some way. Lee Larson will attempt a 40-yard field goal. Spotted at the 30. It's up, and it's good. <laughs> Lee Larson now 8 of 14 field goal attempts on the year. Hits a 40-yarder here early in the third quarter. And Brigham Young now leads Hawaii 6-3. to three. That's the big offensive scoring game we heard so much about. <laughs> All field goals and how important they are. We talk about the running and the passing game the fan has had broken so many records but when it comes right down to it this game is a product of the kickers it's it's their day in the sun so to speak larson now will kick it off from the 40 six to three byu following the 40 yarder by larson sikahima from about a yard deep good coverage by hawaii as a host of green shirted rainbow warriors meet him at the 15 yard line Number 13, Alva Satelli was in there. Reggie Robinson at 230 at left tackle. The nose guard 
is Palaniko Noga. Itai Satawa will be at right defensive tackle. The outside linebacker, Marcus Tarver, number 56. Carl Kenny Brew, number 67, at inside linebacker, along with Doug Kyle, number 49. And the other outside linebacker is 44, Andy Moody. First and 10 BYU as they'll mark it at the 17. McMahon with good protection. Completes it to Gordon Hudson, the tight end at the 33, and Hudson struggles forward to the 34. The ball comes loose and is picked up by number 23, Daryl Williams, but they'll rule that Hudson was down. BYU retains possession. Here's Dana McLemore, who's been much in evidence today. Daryl Williams, who was in on that play, is the right cornerback. The strong safety is Mark Kofensis, who was called for interference that led to one of BYU's field goals. And Verlon Red is the free safety, number 12. A 17-yard gain, McMahon to Hudson, and a first and 10 for BYU at their own 34. The blitz is on, and McMahon dumps it out to Hamilton coming out of the backfield. Hamilton has a blocker out in front of him and picks up another first down as he gets across the 45 of BYU. They'll mark it at the 46. Kent Kofensis, the strong safety, number nine, made the tackle. And they had a safety blitz on that play, trying to get McMahon, put him in pressure, but he getting good fine blocking, picking up secondary blocking by his running backs. As we get to a couple of scores here again, we see this play just barely got the ball away, actually, on the safety blitz. Just in time for Wayman, ha Wayman Hamilton to really turn around and catch that ball. It's almost out of his hands. BYU now with 15 first downs and only six points on the board. From the 46, fumbled by Pettis. Pettis picks it up as he gets a good bounce, but he'll be dropped back around the 35. You talk about a game like this, Steve, and things that are so important, such as the big plays. And this is a big play for Hawaii. Just does not get the handle on the ball. Hawaii taking advantage of it. The ball bounces right back up into his hands with Scott Pettis knocked for a heck of a loss. Really putting Hawaii to the advantage at this point. But again, Hawaii really has not converted as we see him smartly tucking the ball away when it snaps, bounces back up into his hands. Andy Moody and Daryl Williams were in there to make the tackle. The loss, nine yards, back to the 36 and a half. Second and 19. Good protection. Complete to Pettis out of the backfield to the 45. Hit there by 23 again, Darrell Williams, and 49, Doug Kyle, the senior inside linebacker. And it's nice to see number 25, whom McMahon looked to first before throwing to Pettis. Glenn Kozlowski is back in the game after hurting his ankle early in the first quarter. McMahon turned to him first down the right sideline at the top of your screen, then spun right around as if to already know that Pettis would be open and got the ball to him. McMahon now has completed 16 of 23 passes for 207 yards. Third down, 10 yards to go. The ball back at the original line of scrimmage, the 45 of BYU. Incomplete, intended for Dan Plater and thrown too wide, out of bounds. 23, Darrell Williams was covering Plater on the play. It'll be fourth and 10, and BYU will kick it away with exactly eight minutes remaining in the third quarter, leading 6-3. And again, Hawaii having an opportunity is one thing that, as an offensive player again, they would like to get good field position. Return that punt, get it upfield, or put there's a bunch of people lining up on the line. They may be trying to block it. Mike Mees will punt, almost blocked by Tola Umu, and McLemore will take it at the 13-yard line. Out to the 23 for a return of 10. Seven minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. BYU leading 6-3. to three. It'll be first and 10 Hawaii at their own 23 when we return to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. The marching rainbows of the University of Hawaii performing in the stands during the timeout. As we mentioned, this was a hard ticket to get. But some of the people have not shown up in an effort to watch it on television, I'm sure. And we hope that all of you who are with us today are enjoying the second half of the doubleheader here on ABC. Bernard Quarles trying to get outside. 
and he loses a yard or two and has not had any success really running that play except for one time today. Brad and I, the right defensive end, number 93, one of the first defenders there for the Cougars. The loss is a yard. Back to the 22. It'll be second and 11. And give a lot of credit to those linebackers on the BYU team. Hawaii really has not generated any offense on first down, and it was so important. They even lost a yard on that play. You'd like to be second and six, second and rather second and four or five. You've got to pick something up on first down. And second and 11, the sprint draw to Gary Allen will lose a couple of yards as he's tackled by Kevin Walker, who was blitzing number 14 back around the 20 yard line. Takes sort of the suspense out of the game when you don't pick anything up on first and second down like this. Uh, you think Brigham Young has any idea what they might be doing now, third and 13? <laughs> just about half to put the ball up. The ball just outside the 20 of Hawaii. Third down and about 12 and a half yards to go. Six to three, BYU leading here in the third quarter. Quarles faking the draw, firing, incomplete. Over the head of his intended receiver, Ron Pinnock, number five. The tight end, Dave Barbour, was also out there, and Dave McKee, number 15, was covering, along with number 48, Brian Hansen of BYU. It'll be fourth down, 12 and a half yards to go. You see the time remaining in the third quarter. And Hawaii, once again, will have to give up the football. And part of their running game, or mostly running game, Gary Allen, he's been shut down to 14 yards, so you have to give a lot of credit to Brigham Young. Frank Natividad by Sikahima will take Natividad's punt at the 36-yard line. Cuts it back up for a turn of five or six yards as he gets it near the 43 of BYU. Following a punt of 43 yards by Frank Natividad of Hawaii, it is first and 10 BYU at their own 43. McMahon avoiding the blitz as they pick it up and completes it to Gordon Hudson. First down, BYU at the 45 of Hawaii. Mark Kofensis, the strong safety, made the tackle on big Gordon Hudson, the BYU tight end, who has now caught seven passes for 114 yards today. Kofensis is having all kinds of problems covering Hudson across the middle, and that has been the primary pattern. Nothing fancy, nothing mysterious. Hudson going up 10 yards, 12 yards, cutting to his right, and he's been... Uh, Extremely successful with just that one pass play. First and 10 at the Hawaii 45. McMahon changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Pitching back to Scott Pettis. Pettis with a block being chased, breaks one tackle, and finally runs out of room as he steps out near the 40 of Hawaii. Doug Kyle, number 49, was chasing him, got a hand on him, and slowed him up in an effort to get him out of bounds. It's a gain of four. It'll be second down and six at just inside the 41-yard line of Hawaii. Well, we're not getting the kind of scoring we really anticipated, but this game, certainly, we cannot lose sight of how important it is. It's the first encounter the university has had with BYU with anything at stake. And it is the WAC conference for all intents and purposes that is at stake, at stake here. Hawaii has to win here and then go on to beat Colorado State. Second down and six, the draw play to Pettis. Looking for an opening very close to the first down as he crosses the 35 and should have another BYU first down. Reggie Robinson, number 74, the senior defensive tackle, made the stop on Scott Pettis. That is the 17th first down for BYU. This program, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports, will pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. KBTV Denver, a station of the Gannett Broadcasting Group. First and 10 BYU inside the Hawaii 35. Keep it up, keep it up. McMahon completes it to Plater near the first down marker inside the 25 yard line tackled immediately by Daryl Williams. It will depend on where they mark the football as to whether or not it is another BYU first down. Danny Plater the leading receiver for the Cougars with another fine reception. And the thing you saw on that play Plater just keeping his feet in bounds. He really wasn't moving very fast towards the sideline as we get to official timeout. Plater just keeping both his feet in bounds, concentrating on the football, and that's, as we get the measurement for the first down, that's the how you are successful as a receiver, I guess. You have to stay in bounds. Isn't that true, Steve? Is that 
Yeah. I don't think they'll let you allow the uh, reception if you come down out of bounds, will they? Huh? <laughs> well, uh, they did it with me a couple times. <laughs> the measurement being made, and as you see, it is just a bit short, perhaps a foot or so to go. As they wait for the chains to be reset, it is second down and one foot to go for BYU just inside the Hawaii 25. A moment ago, you saw the clock with 5.07 remaining in the third quarter, and the Cougars leading the Rainbow Warriors 6-3. to three. Wayman Hamilton should have the first down as he's near the 29 or rather the 24 yard line Andy Moody the fine outside linebacker and Carl Kenny Brew the inside linebacker combined for the stop first down BYU as we look at it again linebackers up tight to the line as we look at Carl Kenny Brew here coming in to make the hit also they have number 10 Andy Page right up on the line playing at free safety obviously not expecting the pass it would have been kind of surprising if McMahon had dropped back Kenny yeah. Brew, excuse me, Russ. Just going to say that Kenny Brew is a junior from Compton, California, at 215 pounds. McMahon to pass on first and ten, firing it over the middle and completing it. Gordon Hudson again with the reception inside the ten-yard line, hauled down by number eight Mark Kafensis and his brother number nine Kent Kafensis. That time Mark got a little help, but it still didn't do him any good as Hudson makes another reception. And part of the reason that Mark had trouble. Covering Hudson on that play is at number 25, Gen Kuz, excuse me, Glenn Kozlowski. Kozlowski, I've got it. Something like Zabriski. He took right, exactly. He took two of the defenders deep back with him, opening up the underneath zone for Hudson. Hudson now eight catches for 129 yards. First and goal, BYU at the 10-yard line, just inside the Hawaii 10. They cannot get a first down without scoring. Wayman Hamilton trying to get outside, breaks a tackle, fumbles the football in the end zone, recovered for a touchdown. Neil Ballholm of BYU. Well, about three or four rainbows had a shot at tackling Hamilton on that play. Those have got to be Brigham Young fans here all the way from the mainland. Hamilton doing well to keep possession of the ball as long as he did. He was hit by three or four guys. Neil Ballholm, number 89, was in the right place at the right time. The junior from Vancouver, Washington. Here it is again. Kent Kafensis made the hit as the extra point is kicked by Kurt Gunther, and it is good. Three minutes. 58 seconds remaining in the third quarter. BYU with a good drive and a bit of a break at the end, leading. Kurt Gunther is teeing the ball up for BYU. And number three, Anthony Edgar, Hawaii's fine tailback, is back in the end zone. You see him there, set to return it, a 5'10", 175-pounder. Just under four minutes left in the third quarter. And BYU has lengthened their lead now 13 to 3 as Neil Ballholm recovered Wayman Hamilton's fumble in the end zone for a Cougar touchdown. Edgar at the three yard line. Nice move as he gets across the 20 to about the 22. Knocked down by Kyle Morrell, number five, and number 48, Brian Hansen. Here's the play again on which Ballholm recovered the fumble. Strange things happen in this game in number 33. Hamilton just could not hang on to the ball, but number 89, Neil Ballholm, at the right place at the right time to the dismay of the Hawaii Rainbows, I'm sure. And with three minutes and 53 seconds left in the third quarter, there's a lot of time, but Hawaii has got to get something going. First and 10 from the 21. Edgar. Allen on the reverse fumbles. Allen appears to have recovered his own fumble. Brad Anai, number 93, was right in there along with 78 Chuck Ian as they may have had something to do with the play getting fouled up. And Brad and I was not fooled by this at all. Allen getting the handoff right here could not really hang on to it. They're lucky that they got possession back of the ball. And I almost dropping on the ball. It would have been a great place for 
Brigham Young to come up with the football. Allen did well just to get the ball back for Hawaii. Allen is not having a great day with that loss of yardage. He's carried 11 times for minus one yard. Allen again, and he is going nowhere this time again. You know, one thing that you might touch on here is the fact that Brigham Young really does have a lot of pressure experience, Steve. They've been in the Holiday Bowl, which the winner of this conference goes to, and Brigham Young has been there three times. This is the first time that the University of Hawaii has really done this well within the conference. I'm not sure that they have a lot of experience playing under pressure. It's kind of showing here. It doesn't really look like they're really psyched to go, motivated, whatever. They need a big break. They really need a big break to get them going. It is now third down and 22 yards to go as Quarles drops back near his own goal line, firing over the middle, incomplete. The intended receiver was knocked down. There will be a penalty interference against BYU. It appeared as if Merv Lopes, the senior split end from Kailua here on Oahu, was the intended receiver. Dave McKee, number 15, was defending interference indicated by Guy Gibbs, the referee, against BYU, and Lopes is still down at the 25 of Hawaii. Let me tell you something about Merv Lopes as we, he's down on the field hurt right now. We're about to got defensive pass interference here. First down. As you mentioned, Merv Lopes from Kailua, he grew up in the same town I did, Steve. He's a tough kid. His father was my basketball junior and high school basketball coach. And Merv, he was always there at every practice, practicing right along with us. I used to go out and throw the ball to him. He's got great hands and he's a tough kid. And he was just hit from two or three different directions. I hope he's okay. He may have a bad thigh bruise as it appears that the shot that McKee gave him was right on the thigh. Well, he's tough. He's a Paniolo. That's Hawaiian for cowboy here. So he's, he's used to getting bucked around a little bit. Quarles on first down, firing it. Incomplete. It was caught by Ron Pennick, but ruled out of bounds. Tom Holmo, number 46, was defending for BYU. Well, as Quarles goes back to throw and he's rolling out, if you have possession of the football and the referee judges that you are shoved out of bounds, they might give it to you, but they feel, I guess, his momentum taking him here out of bounds. Cannot get his feet down in bounds. If he just get that one foot down, oops, just a tad short. Would have been a nice pickup for Hawaii, but they have to go for it now, second and 10. Second and 10 from the 26-yard line. Fake pitch, Quarles under pressure, dumps it off incomplete. It was intended for David Tolaumu, and we've got a little scuffle going on between Brandon Flint and number 21, Dwayne Coleman of Hawaii. Kevin Walker, number 14, was putting some pressure on Quarles, and he may have thrown it a little bit earlier than he wanted to. I'm sure he was thinking, let's get rid of it. He had Walker was applying some kind of pressure. The ball still at the 26-yard line. Third down and 10 now for Hawaii as the Rainbows have had a tough time moving the football today. And we just got the word that Merv Lopes, number 81, has bruised his thigh, but he will be back. It's good news for Hawaii. Hawaii has completed only one pass so far this half. Quarles on the quarterback draw to the 30, out to the 32-yard line. Kyle Whittingham, 59, was there. 99, Brandon Flint. 206 now as you see remaining in the third quarter 13 to 3 BYU leading it is fourth down three yards to go and Hawaii once again will give up the football as you look at Hawaii coach Dick Tomey with the headset on a lot was made of the fact that Brigham Young's two losses this year were teams which Hawaii has beat but BYU lost the University of Las Vegas in, in, with uh, McMahon out and then to Wyoming in a snowstorm so that really isn't going to count that. Now, T.B. Dodd has a line drive shot land at the 26-yard line by Sikahima, will not touch it, and it continues to take a Hawaii roll and goes inside the 15 and will roll dead near the 13 of BYU, where the Cougars will go on offense with one minute and 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. First and 10, Brigham Young from their own 13. Hamilton breaks a tackle as he was hit by Robinson. He'll be dropped in the backfield for a loss by McLemore. Dana McLemore with excellent penetration after Reggie Robinson had made the initial hit, and Hamilton will lose yardage back inside the 12. It'll be second down. Well, actually, back inside the 13. A loss of about a yard. It'll be second and 11. As we mentioned earlier, the thing that Hawaii needs to get back in this football game is the big play down here inside Brigham Young's territory. If they can come up with a big defensive play, 
It would give them the opportunity and the momentum with 55 seconds left in the third quarter to get some points on the scoreboard in the fourth quarter. On second and 11. McMahon on a bit of a bootleg, firing it and completing it to Scott Colley for a first down at the BYU 26. That's something you really like to see. I'll tell you, that's beautiful from the standpoint of an X receiver to watch the quarterback drop back, getting good protection, but just that fine timing. Flanker number three, Scott Colley, making the break out to the outside at about eight or ten yards here. We'll see him coming to your pitcher right here, just timed perfectly. The defender on the play was right there. But this tough to defend a pass that is perfectly thrown, perfectly timed. 38 seconds remain in the third quarter. That's the 20th first down for Brigham Young. From their own 26, a delay to Scott Pettis. Penalty marker is down on a block in the BYU backfield as Pettis gets perhaps back to the line of scrimmage is all. Number 49, Doug Kyle, and number 64, Carl Kennybrew, combining for the tackle. And here's the preliminary indication from Guy Gibbs. It is holding the major 10-yard variety against BYU. And it looked like it might have been almost two guys holding number 85, Sotoua. He was coming in from the left side. And you don't want to let him loose in the backfield. <laughs> Itai Sotoua is uh, at 6 feet and 215 pounds, a small by major college standards defensive tackle, but he is extremely quick and very aggressive. He is awfully quick. Oh, that whole defensive line, Steve, is really, as we look, the penalty being stepped off. We spoke about big plays and putting the Cougars in the hole. We're going to get the call here from Guy Gibbs. We have a holding on the offense 10 yards from the spot of the foul. That hurts. That makes it even more than 10 yards. It's actually a 14-yard penalty. It is first down and 24 yards to go. 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. BYU now back inside. Their own 12-yard line. McMahon with good protection. No receivers open, however, and he has to eat it inside the 10. Itai Satawa was in there along with Andy Page. Itai Satawa and Andy Page. Page on the blitz, and they drop McMahon inside the 10. One of the few times that the safety blitz has really been effective. And time has run out here in the third quarter. BYU is leading 13 to 3 over the University of Hawaii. And NCAA college football will continue after this commercial message and a word from our local stations. Welcome back to Aloha Stadium in beautiful Honolulu. Steve Zabriskie along with Russ Francis as we start the fourth quarter of play. It is first and 10 BYU. No, it is second down and 28 BYU. They have the ball at their own eight. They lead 13 to 3. Hansen. Hansen gets a yard is all to the 14 yard line. Bruce Hansen tackled by Itai Satawa, number 85, and number 64, Carl Kenny Brew. And as we come into the fourth quarter, the most important fourth quarter, I might add, in the University of Hawaii history, it looked like number 49, Doug Kyle. They were reading some kind of a key in the backfield. He read run all the way. He was also in that pile up just really closing everything up in the middle to shut off the run. Dick Tomey looking on a lot at stake here in the final 15 minutes. BYU the perennial whack champions of late Hawaii somewhat of an upstart. Theirs is the second un longest unbeaten string in college football right now and it's on the line as Scott Pettis picks up good yardage crosses the 15 and gets out to the 18 diving forward knocked down by Doug Kyle 49 and 74 Reggie Robinson. Brigham Young has been so confident in the past with their passing game. It was kind of interesting to note that they would run the ball on third and long instead of trying to get it downfield. But they do. They, they have a lot of experience and uh, can't take anything away from them. University of Hawaii also has got 23 four-year seniors, a very, very much a credit to Dick Tomey's program. Mike Mees is on to punt. Dana McLemore, number 15, is back deep, standing inside his own 45. Now they're changing footballs again, apparently. A little bit of history, if I may. And I'll do that right after this kick. <laughs> Mies will be hitting it from outside his own five. 
Almost blocked by Tola Umu again. But it's a pretty good punt, and McLemore goes back to the 32. Trying to get outside, he cannot, but crosses the 40-yard line and gets out of bounds at about the 42. A 50-yard punt by Mike Mees of BYU. It'll be first and 10 Hawaii, and they'll mark it right at Hawaii's 43. And as we were talking, Russ, there's a lot on the line in the last 15 minutes here with the WAC Conference Championship probably at stake. Hawaii's 11-game win streak and one of only now since Yale has been beaten, three undebe undefeated and untied teams left in the country. That's at stake. And of course, you can't forget Utah and Wyoming and the role they have to play also in the outcome of the Western Athletic Conference. So true, so true. And a long ways away from the first game played here in 1975, UH lost to Texas A&I 43-9. They've come a long way. Quarles firing it on first down and completing it to number 21, Dwayne Coleman, who breaks a tackle and gets into BYU territory and very near a first down at the 47 of Brigham Young. Excellent second effort by Dwayne Coleman, a sophomore from Oceanside, California. Hawaii's Reggie Robinson has a sprained right ankle. We don't know if we'll see him back in there when the Rainbows return to defense. It is enough for a first down at the 47 of BYU. 13 minutes remaining in the football game. Quarles with plenty of time over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for number 81, Merv Lopes. The senior split in from Kailua. Dave McKee, number 15, was defending on the play. Quarles is now 5 of 10 for 92 yards passing. Going to have to have a talk with that young man, number 81, about keeping his eyes on the football. There's a flag down on the field. In most situations such as this, as we see referees heading towards the Hawaii side of the field, you could expect holding. Now you look at Merv Lopes. And you, as you look at the Hawaii team, concern over everybody's face, and rightfully so, as they mark off the penalty. Is, they've just had a tough time really getting anything going as Mr. Gibbs comes over to give us the bad news. A holding penalty on the offense from the spot of the foul. First down. And that will be a major one as well. It would ordinarily be 10 yards. This time it's a 17-yard penalty because, as you heard referee Guy Gibbs say, it's from the spot of the foul. That moves it back to the 36. It is first and 27 for the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. Quarles tipped and incomplete. Almost picked off. Homo, Walker, Brady, and others were there. The Hawaii fans would like to have an interference call. It was Tom Homo who tipped the ball. Number 46. And it was thrown to 21, Dwayne Coleman. And he was hit, but the ball was tipped up. He really didn't have any opportunity to get to the ball. Therefore, no foul. If the ball had been right in his line of sight, and I mean directly thrown right at him or anywhere close by where he would have had any kind of a chance to get to it, look at this. Brigham Young, 314 yards, Hawaii 92, and you can bet that Hawaii is going to have to put the ball in the air. But the ball was within the grasp or in the area of Dwayne Coleman. I'm sure they would have called a penalty. Preliminary movement at the line of scrimmage. A penalty marker is down. As Quarles falls forward to the line of scrimmage, 73, Pulasila Filianga appeared to have jumped off sides for the BYU defense. But we'll await the call. Offside against BYU, it is. So much pressure in this game. You mentioned both teams very much alive in the WAC conference chase for the championship. This game is paramount for both teams. Brigham Young has had trouble coming in here beating Hawaii. They've lost here two out of the four times I believe they've been here. That's right, and the series is even at 4-4 coming into this game. BYU has won two games at BYU, and uh, as you said, Russ, of the four that have been played here, Hawaii has uh, only been able to win two as well. But Hawaii has not had to play against the Jim McMahon before either. I mean, they did last year, but in the closing waning minutes, Second down at 22, it's Tola Umu breaking it into BYU territory to the 44 of Brigham Young. David Tola Umu, who is really an excellent all-around football player. Kyle Morrell, the weak safety, had to make the tackle in the secondary, and they say that Tola Umu is really only a step or so slower than the two tailbacks for Hawaii, and that's saying something because they'll both run about a 4-4-40. 
Well, we saw him get to the outside earlier in the game and pick up some yardage and early in the game. Broke a couple uh, long ones. One was called back on a penalty. Also getting a good block downfield, number 21, Dwayne Coleman. That really helps as a runner to get your receivers downfield, opening up some holes for you in the secondary. A 15-yard gain by Tola Umu. Third down and seven, and Quarles is going to run for it. He'll be stopped short as he gets inside the 40 to about the 38. Kyle Whittingham, 59, and David Apu, 44. Two, two excellent linebackers for BYU. Dropped Quarles just short of the first down marker. He needed to get inside the 42, or rather the 37. He got to the 38. It'll be fourth down and almost a full two yards to go. 11 minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the game. Brigham Young leading 13 to 3. And it's interesting they have stayed with Quarles this long in the game when you would think that they go with Lions. They're known as their better passer. Evidently, Coach Tommy wanting to stay on the ground, and they're going to go for it here on fourth down. They've got a wishbone, full house backfield. Gary Allen behind two blockers. Second effort may have gotten him close, but I don't believe he's got enough yardage for the first down as he appears to be outside the 37. That's a tough play. I mean, everybody is bunched up in the middle. They have a pretty good idea of where that play is going, and it headed right up to the middle. Everybody and his brother was converging on the middle. They had linebackers up tight to the line, and it's going to be awfully close. It doesn't look like Hawaii got it. Brigham Young has been extremely tough against the run today, and uh, they were concerned about that because they had given up 350 yards against Wyoming on the ground, a game they lost in a snowstorm up in Laramie. And as you can see, Guy Gibbs is calling a timeout and wants to measure it. It's that close that he's asked for the chains to come out. But against Hawaii's excellent running attack, the BYU defense has been one of the big keys in the game today. And number 93, Brad and I was pretty much responsible for shutting that down right in the middle. He's been awfully tough. The clouds are obscuring the sun here in Honolulu, but it is still another magnificent day in the islands. And we're glad that you're with us, whether you are here in, this, in Hawaii or enjoying the game on the mainland. And it should be a wild finish as BYU leads Hawaii, and Brigham Young has a first and 10 at their own 37. McMahon, nobody's open. He slides down at the 42 as he picks up four. They'll mark it, actually, at the 41-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. And again, Hawaii dropping a bunch of people off. McMahon could find no one open. And a smart move. People might think that McMahon is taking the easy way out, hitting the turf as early as he does and not trying to pick up more yards but he is a valuable player the valuable player on that Brigham Young offense he can't afford to have his shoulder driven into the turf and separated a smart move and certainly can't take anything away from his courage he's shown plenty of that today second down seven yards to go BYU at their own 41 they lead 13 to 3 McMahon firing it over the head of his intended receiver Scott Colley an incomplete I don't know whether he just dumped that one off or whether he misfired or what. I think he just wanted to get rid of it, Steve. Number 23, Darrell Williams, was right sitting with Collie right on his shoulder. The fans want an intentional grounding call. You can see Dick Tomey, hands on hips, staring out at the officials. That's a tough one to call. I'll tell you, he was, was headed in Collie's direction. If Collie was nine feet, seven inches tall, he might have had a shot at him. I mean, they come that big in this league, don't they? Sort of? Maybe tall guys like that could be could be <laughs> they could have used one there. It is third and seven BYU at their own 41. <laughs> On the reverse Pettis at midfield and bumped out of bounds in Hawaii territory at the rainbow 47 42 Luis Santiago a freshman from Halua bumped him out of bounds. Pettis showing really good balance on that play right along the sideline. And as we look here, Jim McMahon needs 231 yards to break Mark Herman's four-year passing record. 9,188 yards. Boy, that's a bunch. He's got one game after this remaining this season. Have you ever been to Haula? Haula. Did you play against them in high school? Well, they didn't have a high school team. It's out by Kahuku. Oh. They always had a fine team at Kahuku. First and ten, Brigham Young at the 47 yard line of Hawaii. Scott Colley with the reception on a little hitch pattern. 
dropped immediately at the 43 yard line by Dana McLemore number 15. We want to remind you that we're going to be announcing the Chevrolet most valuable player for each team before the end of today's game in whose name a one thousand dollar scholarship will be awarded to that school's general scholarship fund from Chevrolet. Gain of about four at second down six yards to go at the forty three of Hawaii nine thirty five remaining in the game thirteen to three BYU with the lead and the football. McMahon with good protection and in and out of the hands of Gordon Hudson the tight end. I think perhaps Russ McMahon try might have been going to Glenn Koslowski who was the receiver in the pattern behind Hudson. Well the same pass that Hudson has been running and having so much success with all day long. I'm not really sure they were both lined up right in the line of sight. Hudson really getting up off the ground here but he just has a tough time as he tries to bring it in and tuck it. And I want to tell you something. Your mind may not in that position be only on catching the ball turning your back to the defender. That is a tough position to put yourself in and it could hurt. Third down six yards to go. From the 43 of Hawaii. McMahon as they pick up the blitz firing incomplete as Scott Colley is leveled out of bounds by McLemore. Dana McLemore who has really done some hitting in the secondary for Hawaii drops Colley. It is incomplete. It'll be fourth and seven as we look at it one more time. And 15 McLemore was not fooled at all. Colley breaking outside going upward and McLemore doing what a good defender has to do not only just push the guy out of bounds if he can try and knock that ball loose. Don't give him any chance anyway to tuck it maintain possession back and loose and McLemore did a fine job. If you look at the man's stats here 261 yards. McLemore has dropped back as Mike Mees has come on to punt. On fourth and seven Mees trying to angle it for the corner going out of bounds and the officials line up and mark it just inside the 10 yard line. Hawaii will have nine minutes and 10 seconds remaining on the clock. They're trailing by 10 13 to 3. They'll have the ball inside their own 10 when we return to Honolulu. Nine minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the game. Hawaii first and 10 at their own 10 yard line. Quarles firing incomplete intended for Kurt Kofensis, uh, the freshman wide receiver from Richland, Washington. It'll be second and 10. And again, the Rainbow Warriors are having a bit of a problem not only in moving the football, but in getting good enough field position to do some of the things that they do best. I wonder if number 16, Tim Lyons, is banged up at all. Before the game, they said that he was the better passer and they would use Bernard Quarles more as a running quarterback and playing the option. Well, if you not, look. I'm sorry, Steve. We've not right. seen Lyons much during the game. That's right. If you look at the statistics, that would have to hold true, but Quarles is in there. And now has twin ride receivers set to the right on second and ten faking the draw rolling and firing it complete to number twenty one Dwayne Coleman and Coleman has enough for a first down and then some as he's outside the twenty five at the twenty eight yard line of Hawaii Todd Shell number forty seven sophomore linebacker made the tackle and he uh, Coleman replaces Merv Lopes number eighty one who uh, I saw limp off the field just a little bit holding his left leg we hope he's OK Coleman doing a fine job at Quarles. Just when we said he couldn't throw the ball, not that he couldn't, but has not thrown much during the season, throws it to Dwayne Coleman. And Coleman can do something with it after he catches it. First and ten. Complete to Toto Umu out of the backfield, breaks a tackle, and gets across the 40 before Tom Holmo, number 46, knocks him down. David Toto Umu with another super play for Hawaii, and it's another rainbow first down. You know who this guy reminds me of? Number 40, David Toto Umu is of Mosi Tutupu who plays with the New England Patriots played with him for three four years and uh, Mosi is an outstanding all around athlete as is Tolo Umu both from Southern California Tolo Umu from Oceanside down between Los Angeles and San Diego on the coast the pitch back Anthony Edgar as a blocker Tolo Umu cuts the man down but I want to tell you number 15 Dave McKee made a super play because Tolo Umu had him blocked McKee still got enough of Anthony Edgar to bring Edgar down. McKee showing he's not uh, shy about taking those blockers on. He took the whole right side, the pulling guard, shut the play down. That's what he has to do. He has to contain, but if you can get penetration, it really disrupts the running play. And Merv Lopes, number 81, back in the game for Coleman. 
Second down, nine yards to go at the 42 of Hawaii. 7.45 remaining in the game, 13-3, BYU with the lead. Quarles. Complete for number 81, Merv Lopes. As Russ mentioned, just back into the game, the leading receiver, other than Allen out of the backfield, makes a fine reception, and Dave McKee, number 15, again makes the tackle. It's another Hawaii first down, now in BYU territory at the 48. As you look at Lavelle Edwards with the sun visor on, on the BYU sideline. The dean of Western Athletic Conference coaches a record at BYU of 83, 32, and 1 in his 10th year. First and 10. Quarles gets a block in the backfield from Allen and fires it complete. Down to the 30-yard line of BYU is number 34, Reggie Young. And again, it was Dave McKee who made the tackle. Well, with only seven minutes, just coming up on seven minutes left in the fourth quarter, this is exactly what the University of Hawaii has to do. Quarles having very much success sprinting out. Gets the ball to Reggie Young, number 34, and he picks up some extra yards. They're really doing a fine job of spreading out the secondary of Brigham Young. Merv Lopes way out left to the side. They're really trying to spread them out, and I think they're having good success doing it. Lopes is now 9 of 15 for 151 yards passing. First and 10 from the BYU 30. Quarles eluding the pressure, has some room inside the 25 and down to the 22-yard line. Knocked down by Kyle Whittingham, number 59, and Quarles is showing you what an excellent athlete he is as he made that play virtually on his own. They'll mark it at the 23. It'll be second and two. And he can run the ball. We have mentioned that earlier, and he's showing that. We understand the Lions, the other quarterback, as well on the sidelines. They're just going to go with Quarles. He's only a junior, really doesn't have much ex uh, experience really trading back and forth with Lions, but he's showing that he can maintain control here when all about him is going nutso. Second and two. Anthony Edgar diving inside the 20 for the first down. They'll mark it near the 18, possibly the 19. They'll mark it right at the 19. It's another Hawaii first down. They have moved deeper into Cougar territory. And something we've not heard much during the second half of this ball game, Steve, is the Hawaii fans going crazy. This is what college football is all about. Getting your fans behind you. You see the green and white. You see the tea leaves. They're really behind their Hawaii team, but Hawaii is going against a tough Brigham Young defense. First and 10 from the 19 of BYU. Quarles lofting one into the end zone. No, incomplete. Out of bounds. Well, I'll tell Long you that, panic, number five, the intended receiver. A penalty marker is down. Beautiful touch on Quarles' part. Really arcing that ball up high. It was in the air a long, long time. Ron Pennick, it, it looked for, from this angle, looked like he almost got his left football down in bounds, heading right for that corner. Quarles here showing real fine touch. He doesn't appear to be having trouble throwing the ball to me. But Pennick, as we see here, it's going to be tough. Trying to get his left football down, his foot in bounds, just hits the line. And the line is out of bounds boy i'll tell you that was close in just a second that we see the penalty being stepped off against hawaii that really hurts here's the call from guy gibbs we have a holding on the offense first down that's this the major 10-yard penalty the 10th penalty 120 yards in penalties now against hawaii you take 120 yards of offense away from anybody steven you're going to have troubles as we get a score utah final beating Wyoming 30 to 27 that certainly is uh, shaping things up here in the WAC conference a must game for both teams here that eliminates Wyoming really from contention and if BYU wins it sets up next week's BYU Utah game Quarles incomplete intended for Pennock again he was double covered and the pass was too tall Tom Homo was back there along with number 13 Steve Brady and it will now be second down and 20 yards to go from the 30 of BYU how about a reverse pass or option pass, something to sort of rattle the Brigham Young defense? Something unusual, something mystifying. Coach Dick Tomey told us that he had a few little gadgets prepared for today. We really haven't seen one of them yet, however. This will be the time for it, the muddle huddle, the throwback or the tailback option, one of those interesting type plays. Second down, closer to 21 yards to go, actually. They've got it spotted outside the 30. 
Quarrel speaking, looking to throw, and completing it to number 21, Dwayne Coleman. Again, a penalty marker is down at the line of scrimmage, and it appears as if we'll have another Hawaii penalty, possibly for illegal procedure. That would nullify the catch by Coleman. Line. Motion. Motion. The illegal motion against Hawaii indicated by referee Guy Gibbs. Shift on the offense. Still second down. But it is now second down and 26 yards to go at the 35 of BYU. Hawaii did have the football at the 19. They need to go to the 9 for a first down. Tolumu straight ahead may have fumbled the football and fallen on it. I don't know if it came completely loose. He was hit by David Apu, number 44, BYU's fine junior inside linebacker in the 4 3 alignment with Whittingham in the middle. And David Apu on one side. Kind of surprised that call again. There's second and long running the ball, but as Coach Bear Bryant said many years ago, somebody questioned him going for a first down on fourth, fourth and one, and they missed it. They said, Why'd you go for that play? It was a bad call. He said, well, if I'd had two weeks to think about it like you did, <laughs> I might not have called it. But they really are under a lot of pressure, and these calls come awfully fast. It's a gain of only two yards. It's third down and 24 yards to go. Now with four minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the game. Fumbled in the backfield. Quarles falls on it at the 36. He's covered immediately and unnecessarily in college football since he cannot get up and advance it anyway. Now that that really hurt the University of Hawaii. They couldn't they had the opportunity if they had gotten some kind of progress on that next play to at least get a field goal. But you've got to credit aside from that mix of both defenses. These are, this is the least point scored by either team up to now. Steve and they are going to go for it. It'll be a long one. They're going to mark it at the 43 yard line. It'll be a 53 yard attempt for Lee Larson. On line, but short. Right down the middle, but about five yards short. And BYU will take over, leading 13 to 3, with four minutes and four seconds remaining in the football game. Stay with us. Jim McMahon, what a sensational career is coming to an end for this young man. He has one game, the big one against Utah, next week in Provo remaining. And uh, they're going to have to name the record book the Jim McMahon Memorial Publication, I think, after this season, because he is, he has rewritten it, to say the least, as far as offense and statistics are concerned. He's broken most of them and made up a few. That's right, like the record for holding the most records. <laughs> On first and ten, a short yardage play, as the gain is by Wayman Hamilton out to about the 37-yard line. Closer to the 38, 64, Carl Kenny Brew on the tackle. McMahon with 261 yards passing today, as you see, 21 out of 32, and the one interception by McLemore early in the ball game. And we have an injured player down for the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. And I'll tell you, this is just sort of the way it's gone as you look at a injured player laying down. The University of Hawaii team has been hampered all day long. And they only have three, three minutes and 52 seconds left. Three minutes and 52 seconds remaining in this football game. BYU with the football and the lead. Verlon Red, the free safety for Hawaii, was the injured player. He's been removed from the field virtually under his own power and hopefully will be all right. It is second down, eight yards to go for Brigham Young University. The clock and the scoreboard very much in their favor. Hawaii has to come up with a big play here to even be close to staying in this game. A quick down and out on an audible to Gordon Hudson, the tight end, and Hudson is out to the 45 and short by perhaps a half yard of the first down marker. It is very close. They may be measuring it. Kent Kefensis on the tackle. And as we look at number 95, Gordon Hudson, he is one of our Chevy players for Brigham Young University. Gordon Hudson, number 95, our BYU most valuable player, David Totoumu, who has done a lot of things and really been one of the few bright spots for Hawaii today, their fine fullback, our Chevrolet most valuable player for the University of Hawaii. In their names, a $1,000 scholarship will be awarded to the school's general scholarship fund 
from Chevrolet. Hudson with nine receptions for 137 yards so far. And Tolo Umo doesn't have great stats. In fact, he's carried eight times for 59 yards, but he's almost blocked some kicks. He's returned kicks. He's picked up a couple of key big gains for them. He's just a, an excellent, intense football player. And uh, today, at least, the Chevrolet most valuable player for the University of Hawaii, Gordon Hudson, number 95 of BYU, the Cougars Chevrolet MVP. Well, Tolo Umo's had a lot of things, got a lot of things going for the University of Hawaii, but unfortunately, penalties have negated all of those games. That's true. Penalties have really hurt the Warriors today. A little preliminary movement. And the snap is made, but nobody on the offensive line moved as one of the Hawaii players was in there very quickly. It was a first down, by the way, for BYU, as you saw. And we'll await the indication here of if whether or whether or not at least there was an infraction. And as we look again at Jim McMahon's stats, a very quiet, subdued crowd here at Aloha Stadium with two minutes and 52 seconds left. 45,355. They were sold out, but uh, because the game is being shown, a lot of people decided to stay home. Second down. 11 yards to go. Hamilton sweeping to the left. Hamilton has an opening inside the 30-yard line of Hawaii. And BYU in attempting to run the clock out. Coming up with the big play, 23 Darrell Williams on the tackle. We want to thank our statistician John Butera, our spotter Gary Williams, our researcher Ron Jacobs, and our scorer John Ramsey. As we look at Wayman Hamilton taking off again, along with the Hawaii Sports Information Department and head coach Dick Tomey, the Brigham Young Sports Information Department and their head coach Lavelle Edwards for their assistance and cooperation in helping us prepare for this football game today. And we hope that you've enjoyed another doubleheader of NCAA action here on ABC this afternoon. Two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the game. First and 10. BYU at the Hawaii 30. Scott Pettis hit right at the line of scrimmage by number 64, Carl Kenny Brew, who has played an outstanding game for Hawaii as well. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge, and coverage of today's game was produced by Ben Harvey, directed by Ralph Abraham, our technical director, Joe Kim, associate director, Dennis Mazzocco, technical manager, John Crowder, unit manager, Ralph Puglisi, and the assistant to the producer, Karen Sim. And they're already celebrating down on Brigham Young's sideline, guys clapping each other's hands. And with Utah beating Wyoming today, next week is going to be some kind of ball game between BYU and Utah. As far as the WAC is concerned, not to mention the close proximity of the two schools and the long, long rivalry as we have a flag down before the snap can be made and a walk off against BYU for taking too much time. Back to the 34. It'll be second down and about 14 yards to go. And at this point, if I may, Steve, thank you again. It's been a pleasure being with you here in the Aloha State. Well, it's my pleasure, Russ. It's a pleasure to come here and visit the islands, and especially to have you here as a native son with your knowledge. And uh, this 50th state is very, very proud of you as well. They should be. One minute, 30 seconds remaining in the game. On second down, Scott Pettis rambling inside the 30-yard line. BYU keeping it on the ground. The clock continues to run with 120 now remaining. Have you ever been around 45,000 plus people, Steve, and felt like you're all alone in one room? It's so quiet here. I can't believe how they can keep 45,000 people this quiet. Brigham Young has done just that. They have. They have been in control virtually from the beginning, and their defense has been a big part of it. Both defenses have played outstanding football today. Consequently, our score is much lower than we had anticipated. BYU getting a pair of field goals from Kurt Gunther in the first half, both coming near the end of the half. And then Lee Larson kicked a 40 yarder in the third quarter for Hawaii. And the big play really that put the game at least out of reach. It didn't appear so at the time, but it has turned out to be that way was Neil Ballholm recovering Wayman Hamilton's fumble in the end zone that made it 13 to three. And we're going to come up with some key scores here. Iowa again beating Wisconsin 17 to seven Michigan over Purdue 28 to 10. Alabama really hammering Penn State 31 16 and Clemson again we'll mentioned it earlier in the game beating Maryland 21 to 7. It's been uh, an interesting year in college football Steve it, it really has and as we mentioned at the beginning of the game look at one of the local lovelies 
that uh, this was supposed to be a high scoring game but it's really been a defensive battle turnovers have played a part mainly penalties from the standpoint of Hawaii yes really kept the score down yes every time that the Rainbow Warriors had threatened and moved into BYU territory they've either turned the ball over or, but most of the time they've gotten major penalties that have set them back Scott Pettis again running it up the middle and getting it down near the 20 and I think that the University of Hawaii did a fine job actually on containing McMahon's flying aerial circus but uh, you have to give credit to his receivers and certainly our Chevrolet player uh, the game Gordon Hudson number 95 their tight end he was really all over the place today and certainly a key in their passing game Hawaii had a tough time with it. you saw the clock remain running uh, brother with the time remaining now down to 46 seconds and again BYU taking too much time probably uh, somewhat on purpose they're trying to take obviously all the time they can between plays so that they don't run the risk of a fumble they do have a 10 point lead however and even with a major turnover uh, it would be difficult uh, for any kind of a score to make any difference in the ball game right now as far as Hawaii is concerned BYU of course really showing their class this afternoon and this whole idea Steve the stadium and everything else was a product of our late great governor John Burns who stated that the primary reason for the state of Hawaii to build a stadium was to upgrade the University of Hawaii program and make it available for high school football really very very sincere about their desire to improve sports in the state and they have it is a marvelous program they have here in the islands Scott Pettis carried on fourth down again in an effort to run the clock out it was fourth down and six he lost a couple of yards but again it means relatively nothing as Hawaii takes over first and ten at their own twenty nine they have thirty one seconds remaining on the clock and two timeouts unofficially left the scoreboard shows only one timeout remaining now we get back to some other scores Georgia beating Auburn twenty four to thirteen as Corals drops back to the long one and it's almost intercepted almost picked off by Steve Brady a penalty marker is down however at the line of scrimmage the clock on the incompletion stopping with 24 seconds remaining in the game here's Guy Gibbs again motion against Hawaii will move them back and we'll look at some other scores Steve Texas beating TCU 31 to 15 Notre Dame over Air Force 35 7 Oklahoma losing to Missouri 1914. And as as we mentioned earlier Wyoming lost to Utah 27 to 30 yeah. illegal motion offense still first down Steve if I may just for a second I just want to say on behalf of everybody here at ABC a former Farrington High great and coach passed away beat Brigham Young football star John Velasco passed away Wednesday the next night his Radford Rams won the OI West Kyle Whittingham almost intercepted it but dropped it clock stopping with 19 seconds now and BYU's had a couple of chances to take the ball back and haven't been able to pick them off in both instances so it'll be second down and 15 yards to go back at the 24 of Hawaii. It's really been a tough day 19 seconds left the Hawaii team most of them earlier standing up on the sidelines now a lot of them sitting down on the bench knowing that with just 19 seconds left and behind of the game 13 to 3 there really isn't much opportunity here to come from behind Quarles under pressure can't get it <laughs> Brad and I couldn't haul him down and Quarles again showing great athletic ability almost has a first down as he gets it out to the 38 Kyle Whittingham 59 made the tackle Quarles calls timeout now with three seconds left on the clock and Hawaii is anything but giving up and hello and aloha back to you. Look at that. They're saying hello back to Utah. Quarles, the last play of the game, eluding the rush, getting away and running it. Still on his feet in the BYU territory. There are four defenders back. And they still have a hard time hanging him down. Time had run out some seconds ago. And Jim McMahon leaves the field. One more game remaining in a superior 
athletic career at Brigham Young University the greatest obviously career any quarterback has had in college football is one game away from coming to an end for the University of Hawaii a great disappointment their undefeated season is now by the board says BYU has won this football game 13 to 3 and has a leg up on the WAC conference. This is Steve Zabriskie for Russ Francis saying so long from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. The final score again, Brigham Young University 13, the University of Hawaii 3.